Ken. <laughs> Hello, sir. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Now, I can't quite put my finger on it, but there seems to be something different about you today. Don't you think? Um, I'll give a quick rundown on it, uh, and then we can move on. Yeah. Um, there's a simple sort of personal uh, thing that I'm trying out, uh, and then there's a theoretical reason for it. Like most theoretical reasons, it's a little bit longer. So I'll cover both uh, so people give a sense uh, about why it's both personal and integral. Mm -hmm. These two are closely related. Um, I have been shaving my hair since I was 25 years old. Um, and it, I originally did it. I'd written my first two books. And the thing that was particularly striking to me in those books and in that approach that I was taking, the one area that I was unfamiliar with was the ultimate unity consciousness, the mystical state, the Zen state, the Satori, Nirvana state. I really hadn't heard uh, almost anything about that my entire life. I first ran into it when I was 17 or 18 years old. Um, and I read D.T. Suzuki's essays in Zen Buddhism. And it, I was just floored. I mean, it was, what was this thing called Satori? And you have the Satori and you, you see this unity with everything. I'd never heard that. I was raised a Southern Baptist. So it's about as fundamentalist uh, a religion as you can get. It was three volumes. And when I finished reading all of them, my response for three days, I was enraged. You'd think I'd be happy because I had <laughs> discovered this amazing thing. But I was enraged. And I was enraged because I kept saying, you mean this exists and nobody ever told me about it? You've got to be kidding. How can you have a culture that doesn't know uh, about this thing? So that was the new part. Um, I was familiar with the other types of therapies, self-improvement uh, courses and so on. Um, and I'd also started practicing uh, Zen. I was practicing a lot of the others too, Gestalt therapy, I even found a psychoanalytic therapist and so on. Um, but Monks in often East and West will shave their hair. Mm -hmm. And um, so by the time I was 25, it wasn't only because of Zen, but it was largely because of that, that that, that was a new awareness that I was trying to integrate. Mm -hmm. And the reason monks shave their hair is, um, first of all, it's very traumatic for most men to lose hair. Um, and we also, there's no, the brain doesn't really have an archetypal image of a bald man because um, the earliest Homo sapien skeleton is now 300,000 years old. And according to Lenski, the average age up until about 10,000 years ago was 22.5 years. So the vast, vast majority of our Darwinian inheritance was being laid down in that 290,000, 100,000 year process. Nobody got bald at 22 years <laughs> old. There wasn't an image of a bald person anywhere in a brain circuit for 99% of our Darwinian history. Um, when Treya was undergoing cancer treatment, I actually read a study of men who had cancer, they were in their 30s, and they were going bald. And a slight majority of them rated going bald as being more traumatic than having cancer. <laughs> so monks, particularly traditions that separate samsara from nirvana. The hair becomes samsara. It's what you have to lose. You're going to detach. You're going to give it up. So you shave it off. And it can be traumatic and so on. But it's an indication of your dedication to this particular path and the dedication to this higher 
um, truth. Um, it was very awkward for me for four or five years, but I kept shaving it. Um, but it, it was also clear to me from the very start that the actual philosophy of at least Mahayana Buddhism, and certainly my own integral philosophy, which was growing rapidly, didn't want to divide nirvana and samsara. It wasn't a matter of getting rid of samsara. That's what Theravadan, early Buddhism, wants. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to get off samsara, into nirvana, that's it. It's a very dualistic stance. Early yoga had purusha, pure awareness, and then prakriti, the objective energetic manifest world. You're supposed to get rid of that. You want to just be the pure awareness. So they started off very dualistic. Shaving hair was appropriate at that time. But as our spiritual evolution went on and we found this non-dual reality, the Heart Sutra puts it as emptiness is not other than form, form is not other than emptiness. That meant nirvana is not other than samsara, samsara is not other than nirvana. So if you're cutting off samsara, you're cutting off nirvana. It doesn't make sense. Mm. So you don't want to just detach from this or this or this. You want to embrace, you want to include. And that's an ultimate unity consciousness. That's not just an unmanifest um, cessation of, of, of pure nirvana, a um, nirod, which means pure cessation. Uh, example of that is sometimes given as deep dreamless sleep. There's no ego, no pain, no self, no objects. And that's it. That's the pure release from all of this manifest world of objects. So what I would end up doing about every five years was I would start growing my hair back in because it really just wasn't quite my philosophy. But by that time, I'd gotten so used to shaving hair that I really didn't like the feel of hair coming back in. So the most I ever made, it was five days, and then I just whack it all off again. So I never, ever had hair more than five days. Um, for almost 50 years, I, like I said, I cut it when I was 25. So um, almost just because I'm in my 70s now, um, golden years, um, <laughs> The time of people are allowed to go a little bit senile and weird. Um, I heard it's the new 50s. Uh, that's right. Um, but I just became really curious about seriously growing it back in. Um, but, I, but I also knew that I still hated how it felt. So I hit upon a little compromise, which is I'm just getting wigs and I'm just trying on various wigs and wearing them around. Um, and uh, it's as awkward now to wear hair as it was when I cut my hair off to be bald. It's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. People are really sort of taken one way or another. So um, that's the personal reason. I'm just curious. I'm going to try it. If, uh, if I end up liking hair, if most of my friends think it is uh, you know, something that would be cool, um, I might just end up wearing wigs for a while. Um, if I really like it, I'll actually let the hair grow back in if I can get used to it. Um, and that's it. That's, right. that's basically um, the thing. So it's just a personal interest and an integral component. Um, and that's what's happening. So uh, if people want to just email this station yep. and just go thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> Let, Let us know on Facebook what you think and we'll, uh, we'll report back to Ken. Right. Ken, I just love that after, you know, first off, I love you, man. And, you know, I've, I've, I've known you for, geez, so long now. And I just love that you keep surprising me. And, uh, you know, this, I, I was first surprised by this when I, when I came to visit you the day before your birthday. We had a nice meeting and you sent me a little, a little email just to warn you. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I went and saw you and, and it was great. And, you know, my first hit, Ken, was uh, I was like, man, he looks like he looks, 
I kind of get this like Crispin Glover slash Andy yeah. Warhol vibe. Yeah. That's sort of what I get. Yeah. Um, well, I love it. And I love that, you know, at 71, you're still, you're still playing and, and having yeah. fun. And, um, you know, I think for a lot of people, it's just such a shock because it's like your head is such a intrinsic part of your brand. I know. <laughs> you know? I, know. Um, I told you the story of, of, you know, after when I was 19 years old and I had my first spiritual sort of implosion and all that. And I was in Barnes and Noble, just kind of looking through the new age section. And every book I saw was just sort of increasingly telling me, no, dude, you're actually pretty crazy. Right? <laughs> all those books were pretty crazy. Um, and then I found Brief History of Everything and I pulled it and it really just kind of shone, you know, there was sort of a, a light to it. And I pulled it and I saw your bald head on the cover. I always said it looked like uh, Superman on chemotherapy. <laughs> and that's the Ken Wilber that I've known this whole time. That's and right. so when I came to your place last week and you came out uh, with hair, it was, it was cool. And right. um, I love it. So, so well, and that. that's the, actually the only concern I have, I mean, what it feels like to me is just like wearing a sweater or just putting on a piece of clothing. Um, my only concern is people who have been fans for a long time and relate to me as this bald headed guy I just don't want them to feel a break, mm. uh, to feel that this isn't Ken Wilber that they've known and maybe enjoyed or whatnot. Um, I can assure them that fake hair doesn't affect this at all. So we should be able to just carry. We'll forward. just we'll just carry it on. If it's horrifying to you, then. <laughs> and we'll let Ken know. We'll, we'll give you the reviews. You know, Ken, it also reminds me of just another real quick story. Um, this, was, this was in, you know, the first year or two that I met you. And, uh, you know, at this point, I'm still in my 20s at this point, And I was still very much in this, like, almost mythological, spiritual kind of phase of my life where everything was just, I don't know, very imaginal and everything was sort of bigger than it was. And, you know, part of the result of that is something which I'm sure has sort of irritated you over the years. But when I first came to you, it was like I put Ken Wilber like on this Mount Olympus size pedestal. And as you should. It, it was, as I should, as I continue to do. Uh, but, you know, now I actually know who you are and we, we have a little bit more of a normal friendship as well. Um, but back then it was like, man, this is, this is like this half deity, half man. And I'm literally going up to the top of the mountain, just, you know, the whole just archetypal thing. And I was sitting in your loft and, uh, and there's a whole circle of us and you were kind of spinning in your chair to talk to all of us. And one time you spun around and I think you had just, uh, you had probably just shaved your head and I, and you spun around and I saw the back of your head and there was just this one lonely little trickle of blood coming down your head. Right. And I was like, Ooh, even God bleeds. Yep. Absolutely. And a chronic um, hazard of ha head shaving. That's right. That's right. And I mean, you would pick it. I mean, you, you, you went to the skin. Well, now that that's out of the way, now yeah. that we've uh, spoken to the audience. Fascinating in the room, as it is. It's, it's, well, you, you know, this is going to be what everyone talks about. Well, that's, yeah. And that's fine. Yep. Um, 